Hi, I'm Amanda Marco. Um, this poem is dedicated to my best friend, Haley. On September 23rd, I gave you peanut butter for your birthday, knowing it would last you maybe two days. You smiled at the package by simultaneously bear-hugging me, squeezing the breath out of me with every obnoxious embrace, making me dizzy from being spun around. But maybe you weren't thankful for the jar of Skippy. Maybe you were happy to see a letter taped to said Skippy jar, promising you cheese curds for lunch, the forbidden fruit for future ballerinas. But it's been over a year, and I've changed so much. I let my hair grow longer. I can't eat peanut butter without getting your last words stuck in my throat. And road trips don't seem as wonderful, because our last one was chauffeured by a mortician. So every road is like a leftover strand of hair still growing in a child-sized coffin. A sharp reminder that all I have left of you is a conversation on my phone about how much peanut butter it would take to entirely fill my bassoon. I just assumed we could finish our conversation later. But you know better than anyone that if Assumptions are like fish hooks that string us along but never actually catch anything. Because you survived two suicidal parents in anorexia, and if you were to be killed by an 18-year-old boy who wasn't thinking clearly, I hope there's a better explanation than kids just being kids. We talked every day, even though you moved to Minnesota. I knew it was going to be hard to not have you by my side at every hour. I knew it was, I knew it was going to be hard. And I still don't know when I'm going to see you again, which is a pulsing panic throughout me, reminding me of the way you laugh, the way you cry, the way you sneeze like a baby Labrador. And I could drive up to Edina in six hours and four minutes and sit on the road where a privileged teenage boy made a mistake. But I'm sitting in my room just thinking about how I'm a lot more alone than I was a year ago. That night after I got out of my horrendous band uniform, I checked my phone and I expected a clever text about the exact units it would take to my, make my bassoon a really expensive peanut butter jar, but all I had was a voicemail telling me that you were in a car accident. Your uncle's concerned and trembling voice cracking on my answering machine telling me that you and your aunt collided with drunk teenage stupidity and that you were on an operating table surrounded by doctors who didn't know just how needed the frail heartbeat they were working on was. How could anyone possibly understand that you were clinging to the life that you said we would share together and I was clinging to that promise? He told me how you pushed your aunt away from falling glass that would have killed her. He told me how brave you were, but I already knew. Then, on March 21st at 10.06 p.m., I got the message that you didn't make it, so I collapsed because the weight that I used to share with you was transferred to my already splitting shoulders, and I hit my head as my world crumbled to the floor where my mom cradled me and tried to ease the pain, tried to fill the void of a best friend lost. And that pain is still very real today, but it only prickles my heart instead of shredding it. I still get teary at the mention of you, and every cemetery is a reminder of where I lost saw your face. And every pair of Oxfords is a reminder of your perfect dancer's feet. And every Culver's is a reminder of how much I just want to share some cheese curds with you. And Haley, every jar of peanut butter is a reminder that I can't carry on your birthday tradition.